Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so we're going to tell or talk to you about the Tell Tools project, uh, otherwise known as Tell You. So um, Tell You.me is the URL for the, the project. Um, the partners, the people behind the project, are CIT, uh, UCC, DIT, IT Tralee, and UCD. Um, just to give you a little brief overview of what the project is about and where we came from. So um, the whole idea, the premise behind the thing is that professionals, educators, learning technologists are all very busy people. And the lack of time that these people have is, is on the up and up. The more we get uh, digital noise and just more emails and so on, the, la the lack of time for training is, is a genuine issue. So, um, so is the, I suppose, in terms of training for technology and has learning tools, um, maybe just uh, sorting out what is relevant to one person uh, for their activities and otherwise. And this, I suppose, you know, trying to sort out all of these different tools, all of these different activities, amongst all of that time and lack of training uh, can lead to a lack of confidence in those people and generally kind of a poor uptake in, in the, um, uh, the adoption of new tools and uh, pedagogical approaches. So we came up with this idea called uh, Technology Enhanced Learning for You, or Tell You. And the whole idea behind the thing is the premise of it is micro-learning. Micro-learning, small nuggets of, of information, uh, usually in a media-rich way to, uh, to, kind of, uh, to educate those people on the go and uh, in an effective way. So what we've done so far in, in, a, in a very quick glimpse um, is We've created a, a cloud-based uh, lear virtual learning environment, essentially a, a learning management system that's bi uh, built on uh, a WordPress install. And the whole uh, premise of, or the, the ideology behind this project as well is open source. So it's built on open source. Uh, the, the courses themselves are open source and so on. Uh, to date, we have 100 courses uh, designed and developed. Uh, with 120 planned by the end of the project, uh, the end of the project being December. Um, and that open source ideology is there all the time. Everything is Creative Commons license, so it's, uh, it's uh, attribution non-commercial. And um, all of those courses then are sort of um, directed to people through these different categorizations on the site. So you have them based on activities. Now we kind of started off with this very large scope document looking at all of these different technology enhanced learning tools, all of the activities that people would be carrying out on a daily basis, but whether they be learning technologists or, um, or uh, lecturing staff. And we came up with the sort of the uh, ontology where we could uh, categorize these different activities and tools into these key sections. So they're uh, assessment activities, peer learning activities, student-centered activities, or student-centered learning activities, and teach, teacher-led activities. Each course has kind of a, a few key features, so they're very short because the whole idea behind the thing is, is, is a, a micro-learning approach, the pedagogical approach. They're media-rich, so each uh, has a, an animation um, to go with it and a number of training resources as well. And there on the right-hand side, you can kind of see the, 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 the common structure across all of these um, courses there, the why should I use it, um, why is it relevant to me kind of thing, how can I use it, where can I find the, the app, and, and how do I get started, and just put it into context with the people. Again, coming back to the whole point that uh, people are busy and, and uh, time hungry, and these courses give them you know, uh, something to get started. As I said, each of the, the, the courses has uh, an animated feature, so um, each has uh, a, a kind of a why should I use it animation, so that stuff is available on YouTube and is reusable as well by learning technologists and, and, and educators. Um, on that point, we have also reusable slide decks, so rather than it just being a kind of a passive thing and a, a, a course, um, learning technologists and, and academics alike can use uh, slides for that are basically um, uh, sort of the, the key points of each of these courses and they can use them and recustomize them for their own use in, in a classroom or, or otherwise. Um, there are many ways to access the courses, so uh, again getting back to that sort of ontology, 
the types of activities and the interest areas. And you see in the right-hand side, there's different interest areas that people can pick up on uh, rather than sort of going in and, and just going by tool alone. Um, one of the real key sort of benefits we see from the project uh, to date is in use cases. So rather than just focusing strictly on the learning content, we've, um, we've heard from people on the ground. We've heard from uh, those uh, lecturers on the ground that are using these different tools and new tools, and they sort of inform the development of new resources as well and new courses. So use cases we see as being a really key offering of the Tell You project. People say how they're using it, they put it into context, and then we link them back into the <coughs> courses. So um, as, the, as the kind of the resource develops, you can kind of get at it by uh, interest area, by tool, or by on-the-ground practitioner experiences. Um, so I'm going to hand you over uh, to Diane, who's going to talk to you about the impact of the project. Thanks, Jane. Um, so just very briefly, um, we, what we did was to look at this particular project and how um, we'd actually evaluate it. And so we wanted to look particularly um, with, from an evaluation perspective, two different cohorts of stakeholders who are actually um, targeted for this resource. So our academics and also as well those education technologies who do support academics and have a, a clear vision of how um, to embed education technology at a department faculty um, in perspective. So we use Kirkpatrick's evaluation model and really what we were trying to gather was four different levels was um, how, what was people's reaction to tell you, um, did they, what did they learn, um, what was a change, any change in behaviour, a result of interacting with this particular resource, and again, what would they perceive, again, because we're still at uh, early days, the long-term impact, what would they perceive that to be? Um, so we used um, a few different methods there. We have a, an ongoing uh, online questionnaire, which the data is still being uh, captured and analysed. We uh, ran two key focus groups with academics, another one with educational uh, ed tech focus, and also we also have the underpinning uh, Google Analytics to kind of track the behaviour uh, of what's going on in the site exactly. So in terms of the academic feedback, from a reaction point of view, extremely positive. We were, they were said it was very quick and easy to use. Um, they very much considered the, the user case, the case studies, <coughs> seeing other people's practice as being very beneficial. Um, what are other people doing maybe in a discipline that's not my own, that I could relate back to what my own practice could be? And can I go out and find a bit more about that? So the reaction was very positive. And as well, the Irish uh, context about it, um, maybe someone's up the road who I may not have met before, that's uh, something really handy to find out. Um, again, um, our questionnaire is really going to tackle um, data from um, what did they learn, did they actually um, uh, benefit from a, a change in learning from um, um, interacting with you. so we're, we're still tracking our, our evaluation data on that. In terms of change in behaviour, um, the academics found real potential there for collaboration networking. They really saw tell you as an opportunity to reach out and connect with people who they may not have known before and finding solutions to on the ground problems that may not have, you know, they may not know the answer to in their immediate networks because they might be the innovators in their own practice. So um, the, the use cases were particularly striking there and the linkages back to the how-tos within the microcourses was very, very, deemed very positive from, from the academic staff. And again, in terms of the long term going forward, they very much welcomed the opportunity to be able to contribute further into the resource and keep it going and also to be able to have opportunities to see how can we promote it very much so in the local level amongst other institutions, maybe not in the immediate partner groups, and to foster that engagement and promote sustainability. Education technologists then was a different perspective, but again, they, they very, very useful, very positive overall. Their immediate reaction, um, credibility was a key thing there from the ed techs. Um, the fact that the resource was of high quality, review, uh, written by peers within the um, uh, partner institutions, cited, um, you know, from up to date academic references. So it was very credible, and they could really lean on it quite well. And they would see it as something, yeah, absolutely, that's a credible resource. I could re reference that to um, the staff who I support in, in immediately. Um, in terms of the perceived benefit to their work, definitely having access to resources. So you don't have to go and reinvent the wheel, quick and easy access. Um, the point about being able to um, contextualise that, um, taking information, but just maybe pivot it a bit so that it's localised to their immediate needs and maybe the tools that are quickly available to them. So having access to that was particularly important. And again, 
there was a bit about the EdTech saying we really have a lot of networks for um, in Ireland for say all for example for communicating and networking about educational technology components there and would they see it as more interactive resource rather than community led which is different from the academic perspective as well so that was an interesting point um, again we just have a, a list of usability things we just captured on the go to enhance the quality and we know there are a strand of work around quality <coughs> enhancement as well on the project um, so I'm I'm the last pass over, right, sorry. Um, okay, so in terms of how the platform and resources impact nationally, um, <laughs> to start, we, we were looking at the feedback that Diane mentioned from the focus groups um, and the value of these resources to, to ed techs and, and to lectures. Um, from this feedback and from other informal discussions that, uh, that with stakeholders at conferences and things like that, um, the outputs have been repeatedly refined. Um, so you know, Diane uh, was, was showing a list of the, the kind of feedback um, and the usability changes that can be made. Um, so looking at kind of commonalities in the feedback and the kind of critical issues that, that uh, need to be addressed um, at, a, at a very minimum. Um, so um, uh, the I, I don't know was it Shane or Diane who mentioned the the online survey, um, which it was it was kind of recently distributed. Um, it's but it's already yielding valuable insights. So um, it's been distributed to um, Irish educational institutes and to the alt community, who we've always found to be very very forthcoming with uh, feedback and and kind of information. Um, it's, so it's largely positive feedback in, in terms of its potential value, which is encouraging, um, with uh, some recommendations as well, which, which uh, we'll be considering. Um, in addition, um, analytics on the platform um, have highlighted the increasing use of the platform over the past three months in particular, um, which coincides with accelerated dissemination activities. So there's over 1,000 active users in the past three months, which is, which is very encouraging as well. Um, so these activities, um, these dissemination activities include uh, publications and presentations um, from the team at various conferences, from EdTech in Ireland to, to ALT in the UK, um, and an up upcoming presentation in Malaysia um, at the fourth International Conference on Learning and Teaching, which uh, our colleague Dara is, is um, going to be presenting at next week. So these and, and the project results in general um, are also being promoted online um, through Twitter, email, mailing lists, uh, to EdTech and, and academic colleagues, and also to e-learning um, application and software development companies, which was uh, something, it was, a, it was kind of a nice feature, um, people, uh, some software companies retweeting, <coughs> excuse me, um, the resource as well. And we've uh, webinars scheduled um, to continue over, over the coming months as well. Um, so these activities have also resulted in some organic impressions from news and social, social feeds uh, coming from a few different sources, so from academic ed tech colleagues, um, <coughs> so just a couple of, of examples there, um, and some, for, for, uh, some retweets from application developers. So this is an ongoing process that allows us to continue making improvements to the platform, which is key to us, um, while development of the courses, animations and supplementary uh, material also continues. So as Shane mentioned, there's over 100 at the moment of courses, but we, we need to, we're, we're going to try and reach the 120 by the end of, uh, by the end of the year, so we've, we've a couple of months left there. Uh, so just quickly with regards to um, sustainability, um, it's, it's kind of less about things um, like the cost of maintaining the platform, um, which is relatively inexpensive um, because it's uh, through cloud hosting at the moment, um, but it's more about maintaining quality control uh, to, continu to continue to expand and uh, to update uh, the available outputs. So uh, the partnership intends to build on the open source ideology that Shane mentioned as well uh, by first looking for people who share a passion um, for a peer-based means of creating quality materials. So this is, this is quite key. Um, so this can be done by appealing to the kind of core target audience. Um, Diane mentioned the, the kind of ed techs, the learning technologists, and also the, the academics. Um, sort of through the provision of reusable and customizable content and creating something that's genuinely useful uh, for, for people. So for example, the slides, uh, the slide decks that Shane mentioned, which are, are quite useful for, for ed techs. So the material is created and gathered using a templated structure as well um, for the courses, use cases, etc. So, um, but there needs to be a quality control um, to maintain the standard of material available. Um, so through the dissemination activities planned for the last few months of the project, we intend to build a kind of a community of users, but also leaders who are invested in maintaining uh, the platform and expanding the outputs. Just 
very quickly there, just the last few seconds. Um, so at a minimum, with, with the approval of the forum, the results and outputs will continue to be made um, available under an attribution on commercial Creative Commons license, which Shane mentioned, uh, to ensure that the developed results would be, use, would be of use to as many people and as many units as possible. Um, in terms of what's next, uh, like we, we only have a couple of months left, but we, we'll, um, we'll be looking at uh, more intensive piloting, remaining development, as Shane mentioned, of the courses and animations, um, some ramped up dissemination as well, and a kind of a tightening of the, of the platform in terms of security as well. Uh, so thank you very much to the National Forum for this opportunity, and uh, thank you everyone for your time and your attention. <laughs>